now and then. Much to Heike's delight, Alistair seems to have hit it off with her son, Sammy. <laughs> this is when it gets not so beautiful. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> nah, he's off. He's off. He's off on one of his mad fits. <laughs> he's got he's got excited. What here? And does that calm him down? Heike and Alistair have been together for a few weeks now. But what no one is sure about is whether this is really developing into a serious long-term relationship. Meanwhile, down at his house behind the harbour, their friend Nigel's busy preparing a special dinner to celebrate Heike and Alistair getting together. After his son sent him a good luck totem from the South Pacific, Nigel caught his first lobster in three years of trying. He's never cooked one before. You seem to be taking this very seriously, Nigel. You really know what you're doing. I wonder if I haven't done it before. In theory, it'll work. So it's silly in shock that you've uh, you never well, met. <laughs> it actually went out on the radio, which uh, was a bit embarrassing. That was thanks to Carol. But, uh, yep. So it, it Radio Silly announced it? Radio so. Silly announced that uh, Nigel was at last caught a lobster, and I had quite a few phone calls after that. Are you salivating at the, the prospect of tasting this lobster? Oh, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. A lot has gone into getting to this point for you, hasn't it? Indeed it has, yes. <laughs> it's a lot of years, but it's going to be worth waiting for. It's going to be lovely. Tonight looks like being an eventful night on the islands, and not just for Nigel. After spending the last six years devoting his life to working for the Islanders, the time has at last arrived for the vote to decide David's future here. It's a, it's a big day for you today, isn't it? Uh, yes, I suppose it is, really, yes. So it's actually possible that by the end of today you could have been given your marching orders? Yes, I suppose it is possible, yes. So it makes it, um, although I'm hoping I will be invited, it's still an unsettling time because there's always that note of uncertainty. Because they could vote against you, not because you've been a bad minister or anything, but for all kinds of other reasons. Well, there could be all sorts of reasons. They might think, well, it's time to move on, time for somebody different, time... For... Well, who knows what motivates people to vote one way or another. But you want to stay, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I absolutely do. The vast majority of islanders are assuming David's re-election is a mere formality. The vote will be amongst 16 island representatives who will be arriving shortly at David's house, the manse. Should the vote go against him, David will have to leave the islands. David knows he's a popular figure and is quietly confident. Tonight's meeting will end in a ballot for which he must have a 60% majority. In the chair will be Steve Wilde, who's heard nothing but good reports of David's devotion to his job. Now, David, you've done how many years now? On Six, here? I'm in my seventh now. So it's 60% that we need is the vote. Steve's also pretty sure that David will be asked to stay on Silly. Each of the 16 is supposed to have canvassed opinion amongst all the Methodist congregation so they can represent the true feelings of the islanders. But there's no formal record of the views of the majority. As we meet together this evening within these four walls, we pray that you'll give us a wider picture Help us to look out from where we are, from the bounds of our meeting and our buildings, and the life that we share together, to the wider world of which we're a part. This evening we pray for these islands, a place of beauty, of peacefulness, a place where we live out our lives, and where we welcome others to be among us. And as we look back over these summer months, we thank you for all those who come here on holiday, who shared in the fellowship of our churches. And so we pray for ourselves this evening. We will ask, Lord, for the guidance and the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. You might guide us in our fellowship together, in our discussion, and in the decisions that we make. Elsewhere on the island, there's a happy, festive mood in the air. Down at the Atlantic, Sophie's having a few drinks with friends and family before her big day. So how many people invited to the wedding? About 120. To the wedding? Really? To the actual wedding? To the wedding, yeah. Oh, big church. How big's the church? It's a very small <laughs> church. <laughs> Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow night? <laughs> <laughs> Did your mum have a word? 
I'm a <laughs> Down the road at Nigel's house, there are more celebrations. Oh, hello, lobster. Oh. Ha ha. Cheers. Here's to many more. One person is missing. Sadly for Heike, Alistair's been called away to the mainland on family business. So uh, what's Alistair doing at the moment, as he couldn't be here? Um, I think he just arrived in London and is um, heading to his uncle's house. It's a real shame he can't be here tonight. It is. Yeah. Alistair's told Heike he'll be back on Silly in a few days. And as it turns out, the trip may have worked very much in Heike's favour. Thank you. Oh. To the chef. Very well done, yeah. cook. Thank you. Do it again soon, would you? Yeah, yeah, I will. As soon as I catch another one. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the manse, the meeting to decide David's future is still in progress. It was expected to have finished long before now. The result won't be made public until tomorrow morning. Next morning, David and Steve Wilde are up early. We're often troubled, but not crushed. Sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. There are many enemies, but we are never without a friend. And though badly hurt at times, we are not destroyed. So, good morning. What's been the decision? Well, it's bad news, actually. Uh, unfortunately, David didn't receive the right percentage, just missed it. And so we won't be inviting him for a further two years. When I read the announcement, there was great shock in the room. Is there no appeal? Is that it? No, that's it. That's how we work. And then my limited experience, admittedly, I can't imagine a more caring or a more loving minister for a place like this. He's an what... exceptional man. So why did those who voted against him vote against him? Well, you'd have to ask them, I don't know, but I mean, I, I had to guide the meeting. Uh, David spoke, the circuit stewards were the, the lay leaders. They spoke, they recommended that David should, should stay, and then we, the, we prayed and the vote was taken. It's been very upsetting, very, very upsetting indeed. I'm his minister, really, so I want to be supportive of him and to comfort him and to help him. I mean, really, this has been a big shock. It's a shock for me. I didn't expect this at all. When word spreads about David's fate, there's an air of total disbelief amongst most islanders. The fact that no official reason is given for the decision increases the sense of bewilderment. Steve has a series of appointments on the mainland and has to leave almost immediately. This is not the kind of farewell he'd had in mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about all this. Well, that's how this go, isn't it, really, But thank you for your support and love and time over here. I really appreciate that very much. Thank you. It's been, it's been a special time. I felt very close to you through this, but it's a horrible thing to have had to go mm. through with you, really. David's good friend, the Reverend Donald, is astonished by what's happened. It's come as a big shock, quite a, a, a body blow to learn that David will be having to leave the islands. He's loved these islands and all its people, not just his Methodist flock, loved all the people uh, with a great, great passion and, and served them so well. Talking about David and what's happening, is one of the hardest things I've had to do for you on, on camera. I really love that guy. I've learned so much from him and, and sharing with him. 
Yes, this has been one of the hardest bits of filming that I've had to do for you. The nearest thing I can describe is to say it's a bit like a bereavement, where you have some sort of sudden loss. You, uh, first of all, don't really believe it's happened. But it's been a shock. Yeah, it has been, actually, yes. Quite a shock to me. I suppose I feel hurt, really, um, because, uh, well, I love these islands, and I love the people here, and I love the people in the church, and uh, when you've been turned down or whatever expression you want to use by people you love, it's quite hurtful, really. Did you have any idea that this was going to happen? Uh, no, not really. No, it did come as a surprise, actually. I don't know, perhaps some people don't appreciate my style of ministry. I mean, people, we are different, aren't we? And uh, I'm not saying that the way I operate is the best way or the only way. But meanwhile, it hurts quite a lot, really. Suddenly, the events of the last 24 hours catch up on David. <laughs> There's no respite or escape for the minister. Ahead lies one of his busiest days of the year. First comes the big harvest festival service. David has no choice but to put on a brave face and get on with things. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you here this morning to our Harvest Thanksgiving. It's really good to be able to share together with you all. And uh, could I also say on a more personal note, thank you very much to all those who've telephoned or sent cards or letters over the past day or so. I very appreciate that very much. Thank you. Now we'll say the Harvest Blessing together. May the love of God surround us. Meanwhile, down on the quay, people are gathering to go off to Sophie's wedding on St Agnes. So, sorry. Good morning, shattering news. I won't say any more, but no, I am amazed. And no wonder you, you took a wonderful service very carefully. Thank you. So, straight after Harvest Festival, David picks up his kit and heads down to the quay himself for this afternoon's wedding. After one of the wettest summers on record, the weather is absolutely perfect. Despite his huge disappointment over the vote, David knows what an important day this is for the bride. Today is a very special day for Mark and Sophie and a day of gladness and celebration for them and I'm really pleased to be sharing in that. So I have to get on with that and make it special for them and my own feelings and what's happened to me in the last 24 hours I have to put behind me for their sake. So that's what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, Donald and Margaret have called around to the manse to help go through all the hand-delivered letters that have been arriving for David by the hour. There's a very impressive amount of cards, isn't there? Yeah, it, 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 it's overwhelming. Mm. And I think to some degree, David has found it quite overwhelming. Uh, the emotional outpouring uh, of, of love towards the man. Because it's not just one or two cards, is it? It's a whole no, sack. No, oh, no. there are dozens. There are yes. dozens of cards and, and, and letters, messages of all, all kinds. But what strikes me is that, that they're from right across the community, all the islands, uh, and people, whether they go to the Methodist churches or not, have obviously felt that, that, that David cared about them, as we know he has done. He's um, really going to be missed, isn't he? Oh, king-sized missed, yes. A few days later, and Hike is beginning to realise that after just a few short weeks, her world has been turned upside down. Alistair's not back yet, but that hasn't stopped the progress of their high-speed romance. Hello? <laughs> Hi. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> How are you doing in London? <laughs> I love you and I miss you. So is he calling a lot? Are you, uh, are yeah. you getting a lot of contact from him? Sort of three to five times a day. <laughs> yeah. You missing him? Don't ask me those private questions, but I can say yes. We I take do. that as a yes. yes. Oh, you're bashful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Over on the mainland in London, Alistair's doing a bit of shopping before heading back to Scilly and the new girlfriend. Things seem to be getting very serious indeed. I've been buying a few special things which I can't tell you too much about. You know, it's still early days. I think it's been maybe five, six weeks now, something like that. But um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, really, really happy with the way things are. She, she's a lovely, lovely person, and she's just great fun to be with. Very vivacious, very bubbly, very outgoing. Here I am up in London, really missing her. So what does that tell you? There must be something in it, I guess. You're missing so, her. Right? Yeah, I'm missing her terribly. Yeah, I, I'm really, actually now, I've had enough and I want to get back to Silly. So, you know, I just want to get back, uh, see Hike again, see Sammy kick a ball around on the beach. And you get on very well with Sammy. But yeah, Sammy's great. You know, we, we play football together. You know, we're good mates, I think. Is it true love, Alistair? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think she's the one, yeah, very much so. So, big, big days. Big, big, big days big ahead, days. yeah. Well, when I get back to city, we'll just have to wait and see. I guess just watch this space. Back on Scilly, and it's a pivotal moment in the life of this remote community. People from all five islands are gathering up on Tresco to pay tribute to Donald and Margaret. For David, the timing of events isn't good. Just as he needs his friends most, Donald and Margaret are leaving Silly forever. After 17 years of service, Donald and Margaret will be retiring to their home on the mainland. Even now, though, their thoughts are very much with David. I hope all goes well for you this morning. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Yeah. Yes, it means a lot that you're here. Well, it means yeah, a lot to me. Yeah. We are saying, finally, fair. Well, but farewell, of course, is it's all about journeying, isn't it? It's all about moving on. Farewell speaks of, of traveling. You must all be moving on as well. All of us, day by day, every day, must journey on. But of course, the hard part of any journeying is that it means leaving. God bless. Oh, we're going to miss you, you know. God bless you. very special. Oh, this is where I cry. Some of my love. This is where I cry, Richard. Just hold a minute. He's making sure we go. God bless Yeah. 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 Over at Heike's house at Old Town Bay, the phone lines have never been busier. Listen, I've got some really, really exciting news. I'm engaged to Heike. That's great. Yeah, oh. I know. What do you think of that then? Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hello, thank you. <laughs> oh, he's a fast worker, my cousin. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thanks. Thanks, Nigel. That's, that's really kind of you. Thanks a lot. This has happened very yeah. quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, it's quickish, I guess. Um, say that again. Yeah, when you find something like Heike, who is so wonderful, you just you just really want to get on with it, and you think to yourself, well, why wait? You know, there are no guarantees in life. You know, why not just get on with it and see how it goes? And I'm I'm really happy. I feel relaxed about the whole thing, and I can't wait to marry you. Did That's you good. imagine this would happen? You know, when you first came here, did you no. see this would have things work out? No, no, completely. Yeah. Overcome with joy, <clears throat> but I'm German. <laughs> so not really. Okay. <laughs> not really. Just a bit. Not, not really. Just a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I love you. Hmm, love you. Hmm. A few days later, and for David, it's time for a particularly poignant goodbye. You take care anyway. Old. Yes. Goodbye, David. Bye. Bye. I shall miss you. And I'll miss you as well. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You've been very, very special.
I can't pretend that this hasn't hurt because it has hurt a lot. But it's no good me wallowing in bitterness or resentment about all of this. I've got to move on with my life. I mean, life is a journey and you have to go on. I have to go on. The local people here in the church and community have to move on as well. I do believe that in life you move from one room to the other. There will be rooms for me in my life, places to go, things to do. I'm looking forward to the journey of life. It may not have been a path I've chosen and I will always have a special place in my heart for Silly. But my future doesn't lie here. My future lies in the great unknown. And that's a challenge, but it's also an adventure and an opportunity.